All right, fellow babies, welcome back to Pactor Factor on Sifted.net. Uh, thanks to our Patreon patrons and our YouTube subscribers who are getting this real time. Thank you to our Amazon Prime members who are smart and industrious and have remembered to link their Amazon Prime account to their Twitch Prime account. And if you are not lazy and you are not stupid, please remember to stick it to Amazon and re-up and reconnect your Amazon Prime account to your uh, Twitch Prime account, relink it. The instructions are right below. Easy to do. Don't be lazy. Shane needs to get paid so he can afford gas to come out and see me. This episode of Pactor Factor is brought to you by DeShazer Ryan Realty. Right now, Doug DeShazer has beautiful lots available adjacent to Kukanusa Lake in Northwest Montana. Pull up your RV and access the hookups or build your own construction. Either way, you have access to world-class fishing, hunting, boating, swimming, biking, hiking, and the internet. No matter where you're looking to buy, make Doug DeShazer your real estate consultant at 406-291-1643. That's Doug DeShazer at 406-291-1643. Okay, today's question from YouTube from Tarek3439. If you were starting a publisher tomorrow, what would you do to make yourself attractive to developers? With the push to all digital, why would a developer still sign up with a publisher? Is it worth losing a cut of the money? Does a publisher have any purpose besides maybe covering some development costs? Love the work. Thanks for sharing all your years of knowledge. Very kind. Thank you. Um, you know... If, uh, the answer is some guys can self-publish, um, some guys can't. Uh, the truth is, like, a publisher does essential services that people don't know how to do themselves, like marketing. I mean, and again, depends on the developer. If the developer is bungee, they know how to market. You know, but if you're if you're a, a smaller developer, like even like Baldur's Gate, I know Alan Wake was epic, right? And it's like. Remedy is big and they could have done it themselves, but Epic has reach and, and didn't charge them very much. Um, you know, back in the day when we when we had discs, the the all the game companies paid 5% to the distributor to distribute their discs because they couldn't deal with handling it. Um, digital distribution is easy if people know where to find you. It's hard if they don't. Um, so as an example, if you want to be on Xbox, guess who? Guess who you got to go through? Microsoft. Like they're not putting it on Xbox unless you go through them. Same on PlayStation. So who has that relationship? A publisher. Um, I I don't know how much a cut the publisher deserves. I would say between you know five and fifteen percent if you're an external studio. The answer to your question though is that the the normal model for developer publisher split is that the publisher will keep 30% of the revenue and the, the, the developer will get 70. Uh, but in exchange for the 30% that you give to the publisher, if you're an independent third, third party um, developer, the publisher will put up all the money for the game. So let's just say, nice easy numbers, the game costs 30 million to develop and does 100 million in sales. The publisher will put up 30 million of expense. They get the first 30 million of revenue back. That's their first dollar payback. And then the other 70 million actually does in fact go to the developer. So, so the developer takes no risk of development up to $100 million. The publisher takes all the risk up to $100 million of revenue. And then after the first 100 million, then they split it 70-30. So the publisher puts the 30 million out, they get the first 30 million. So if the game is an absolute bust and only does 30 million in sales, the publisher's whole and the developer makes nothing. If the game does 200 million in sales, the publisher gets back their 30 million and then they get another 30 million, 100% return, and the developer gets 140. So I mean, that's really, and if you think that through in my example, that's fair. Like they're taking the risk. Um, an, an analogy to that is if you're in a lawsuit because you got you know hit by a car and you and you're you know injured badly and you lost your job, you don't have the money for a lawsuit. You hire a law firm and they take a third of your recovery, and they pay all the legal bills. And they they pursue the case. That's kind of the right number, a third. Um, Apple gets thirty percent for publishing on iOS. Uh, Microsoft gets thirty percent for hosting on Xbox. 30% is kind of the number. Now again, is it right? No, because you could self-publish and 
and keep all of it. Um, Playtika is up to over 20% of revenue from its own web publisher, its own published content not on mobile. Um, now they do it on mobile, but it's not an app from the App Store. It's a web link that you click on to play their games and they get to keep all of it. So they have 20, 22 or 23% of revenue comes from that. So sure, if you're already good at it, it makes perfect sense to keep as much as you can. If you're a startup, it makes sense to give the publisher 30%. Um, I'll give you a great example of a studio that always had a publisher, it's Gearbox. You know, that they did all their games with Take-Two or somebody else. Um, but you know, uh, Borderlands was Take-Two. Uh, I don't remember who did Colonial Space Marine Sega or somebody. Um, they always used a publisher, Brothers in Arms, they always used a publisher. That might have been Ubisoft, I can't remember. Um, but then they got big and they started self-publishing, you know, and then they sold themselves to Embracer, so Embracer became the publisher. I think that, you know, it just depends on size. It's, it's sort of like, do you build your own website or do you use Shopify? You know, you, you use Shopify when it makes sense because they just know how to do it. Do you build your own cloud or do you use Amazon Web Services? If you're Roblox, you build your own cloud. If you're a four-person startup, you use AWS. So I think it's the same answer. Um, but if I were really doing it, what would I do to make myself attractive? I charge less than 15, I'm sorry, less than 30%. Um, that's why, you know, an earlier question we talked about Roblox as a platform or Fortnite as a platform. I think they should attract big games and charge less than 30. Because if you attract a big game, you're kind of guaranteed that you're going to have incremental revenue. If you have incremental revenue, you can afford to let the, the developer keep 85% and you keep 15 because it's 15% of something instead of 75% of nothing. Uh, so I think that's the answer. Um, thanks for the, for the kind words at the end, by the way. All right, fellow babies, thanks for joining us on uh, this edition of Pactor Factor on Sifted.net. Uh, to our Patreon patrons and our YouTube subscribers, thank you. You're getting this, this show real time. Uh, to our Amazon Prime customers who are neither lazy nor stupid, who have remembered to stick it to Amazon and link their Amazon Prime account to their Twitch Prime account, really easy to do. You got to redo it every month or two. So please remember to do it when you hear me say you're not lazy and you're not stupid. Uh, thank you for doing so. You're getting the show real time. People watching who have not done any of those things because you can't afford it. You don't have Amazon Prime. Thanks for watching. You're getting a week late on YouTube because I insist it's free because I don't, I don't get paid. So I don't think we should be forced to charge you. Uh, but follow me on Twitter at Michael Pactor. We will see you next time, fellow babies.